We are much more careful when we do that. The worst way to spend money is when government spends other people's money on other people. It is terrible. It does a terrible job of efficiently using those resources, and it creates all kinds of perverse incentives. The second thing, second maxim that Milton Friedman delivered was uh, that we do a terrible job in government of re-examining the premises upon which a lot of our social welfare policies are built. What we do is we, we find a problem, whether it's housing, whether it is unemployment, or even, yes, health care. And somebody, some bureaucrat, some uh, elected official, some executive, comes up with a policy, a program, in order to eradicate that problem. And that program is passed and adopted. And inevitably, it's supposed to wipe out that problem. And inevitably, we come back five years later, and the problem's there. It's typically worse. It's bigger. And the response is always, well, if you weren't so parsimonious in the first place, if you just spent more money and created a bigger program, and if you'll spend that more money now, we'll solve that problem. And that is exactly what we're about to do with Medicaid. It is spending other people's money, spending the taxpayer's money on other people. It is the most inefficient way to spend money. And this plan, as it's conceived, and granted I haven't had a whole lot of time to look at the 300 pages of amendments that have been put together over the past couple of weeks in the uh, negotiations that have taken place outside of the structure of our finance committee, but it is spending other people's money on other people without any of the assurances that promote any kind of positive incentive. And it is expanding a fundamentally broken program. Uh, Medicaid is hurting people in Virginia. It is hurting people. It is hurting the people who are struggling to pay their health insurance, who are struggling to pay their premiums. It's hurting the people who are struggling with high deductibles. And you know what this is going to do is it is a repeating cycle. What we are doing is we are providing people with Medicaid coverage that shifts the cost of health care to those people who are already struggling to pay their health insurance premiums, who are already struggling to pay the deductibles, and it puts more pressure on them. And let me tell you, mark my words, we will be back in three or four years because we are going to be creating a new class of people for whom Medicaid needs to be expanded in three or four years. And there are many people, on maybe on the other side of the aisle, but certainly with a different political viewpoint than I do, who think that's a marvelous idea that we ought to be creating a universal government-funded health care system. And that is what this proposal is headed towards. It is part of that initiative. It is wrong-minded. It is not helping people. If you wanted to help people who were, uh, who were struggling to pay their health insurance, who were struggling to pay those deductibles, uh, the uh, gentleman up the street here would have signed those three bills that were geared towards helping working Virginians meet those obligations and ease that burden and create fewer people who are struggling under uh, the uh, problems imposed by this system. Uh, you know, it's most unfortunate that those bills were vetoed. Uh, those would have helped real Virginians. This is simply the wrong way. It's not that the folks on that side of the aisle are evil people. And I don't think a single person over here is an evil person because they don't believe that this is the right way to solve our health care access problem in this country or the Commonwealth of Virginia. It's the wrong way to go.